This is the most unethical sham since I've been in politics. And if you really wanted to know the truth, you sure as hell wouldn't have done what you've done to this guy. Are you a gang rapist? No. That's Lindsey Graham, current United States Senator from South Carolina, one time presidential hopeful and a man who as of 2015 has never sent an email. Lindsey Olin Graham was born in 1955 in Central South Carolina, a former textile mill town between Atlanta and Charlotte. At the time of Lindsey's birth, the population of Central was about 2,000. Two folks embedded in that number were Lindsey's parents, FJ and Millie, high school dropouts who had their own restaurant, bar, liquor store, pool hall called Sanitary Cafe. At nine years old, Lindsey fielded phone calls from concerned wives looking for their husbands. And by the time he was 12, he was running the pool hall. Throughout Lindsay's childhood, the Graham family lived in a single room in the back of the business. In his book, Lindsay for some reason noted, quote, My folks sold beer to anyone of legal age, but I'm sorry to say, for many of the years, my parents operated a bar. Black people were expected to drink the beer they purchased from us off the premises. It's just the way it is. My dad explained to me that eventually changed, but not until the early 70s, much later than it should have. Graham was the first in his family to go to college. When he was attending classes at the University of South Carolina, his parents passed away just 15 months apart from each other, leaving Graham to take care of his younger sister and the family business, which eventually went under. Graham and his sister were able to make ends meet through Social Security survivor benefits, and he'd go on to graduate from the University of South Carolina with a BA in psychology in 1977 and from the university's School of Law with a JD in 1981. A year later, Graham was commissioned as an officer and judge advocate in the U.S. Air Force. First, he spent four years as a prosecutor and defense attorney in Europe. He explained the fun he had and the freedom that came with being single overseas. Don't believe anything anybody tells you about my Air Force exploits. I was very heterosexual. That's all you need to know. After his very straight stint in Europe, he left active duty in 1989 and joined the South Carolina Air National Guard, where he served until 1995. The same year, he joined the U.S. Air Force Reserves before retiring at the rank of Colonel in 2015. Graham's time in the military has been subject to much contention. He was promoted twice over 10 years during his 33-year tenure. Under the Freedom of Information Act, Graham's military record was brought to light. Craig Whitlock of the Washington Post noted that Air Force afforded him special treatment as a lawmaker, granting him the privileges of Frank with few expectations in return. Between 1995 and 2005, Graham was credited with 108 hours of military training, which is less than a day and a half per year. Although he rarely put on his uniform during that time, he was given promotions, first as a lieutenant colonel and then to colonel. In an interview with the Washington Post, regarding the period of little output and big return, Graham said, At one time, I almost thought about getting out because I felt like, okay, what, what am I doing here? But he stayed on and accepted the promotions and even made them a big point in campaign ads years later. He has served as a reserve duty officer in Iraq and Afghanistan and has been to the Middle East more than 20 times. However, according to the New York Times editorial board, what this campaign video fails to point out is that Graham's time overseas only lasted a few days and the trips coincided with trips he was making regardless as part of congressional delegations. So while Graham was rising in the Air Force reserve ranks, he was also climbing the ladder of Republican politics. He was elected to the South Carolina House of Representatives in 1992, serving one term before serving four terms in the U.S. House of Representatives, during which time he voted for the Defense of Marriage Act a federal law which allowed states to disregard same-sex marriages. When Graham was elected to the Senate in 2002, he was re-elected in 2008 and 2014. His views on gay rights only expanded. He opposed efforts to protect LGBT workers from employment discrimination, calling it agenda-driven. That is termed the Employment Discrimination Act. I, I don't think I vote for it. I think it's moving an agenda uh, forward that, that is um, not necessary. 
And when South Carolina refused to issue benefits to same-sex spouses in the National Guard, Graham supported the decision. I will support my state's ability to define marriage between a man and a woman, the right to do that. He even compared the fight for same-sex marriage to the abolition of slavery, saying the people, just like the ones who voted for the abolition, should decide whether same-sex couples are allowed to marry. Slavery was outlawed by a constitutional amendment. Go watch Lincoln. Great movie. Yeah. The people decided. Graham's views didn't always fall in line with the majority of the GOP, however. He's been willing to be bipartisan and work with Democrats on several issues. He voted to confirm two of President Obama's Supreme Court nominees and even worked with Democrats on a climate change bill. But then, soon after penning the bill, he withdrew his support and voted against that very bill he helped author. In 2010, Graham, once a staunch supporter of combating climate change, said climate change was no big deal, even if 97% of climate science papers disagree with him. I think they've oversold this stuff, quite frankly. I think they've been alarmist and the science is in question. In 2014, Graham was toying with the idea of running for president. He joked about how white men would do well if he were to win. Less than a year later, he decided to take this platform to the masses. I'm Lindsey Graham and I'm running for president of the United States. Graham announced his candidacy for president mainly because, in his own words, the world is falling apart. He ran on a number of ideas like, If I'm president of the United States, we're going back to Iraq and we're going to pound these guys in the ground. And arguably, the most important issue. If I'm president, we're going to drink more. Graham had his eye on one opponent he knew he'd have to edge out early if he wanted the nation to drink more. He attacked Trump, a man who hasn't touched alcohol from the get-go. I, I don't care if he drops out. Stay in the race. Just stop being a jackass. Mm -hmm. You don't have to run for president and be the world's biggest jackass. But when Trump got word of his new moniker, he decided to one-up the senator. So Lindsey Graham says to me, please, please, whatever you can do. You know what I'm saying? I said, what's this guy, beggar? He's like begging me to help him with Fox and Friends. So I say, okay, and I'll mention your name. He said, could you mention my name? I said, yes, I'll mention. And he gave me his number, and I found the card. It, I wrote the number down. I don't know if it's the right number. Let's try it. 202-228-0292. I don't know. Maybe it's, you know, it's three, four years ago, so maybe it's an old number. 202-228-0292. So, I don't know, give it a shot. Graham ended this campaign not too long after, just six months from the time he first announced his bid. Graham, like many others, absolutely hated Trump, and the idea of endorsing a man who gave away his phone number didn't even cross his mind. In fact, he disliked Trump so much, he endorsed George Bush's little brother first. Please clap. <laughs> And then after that bid failed, he endorsed Ted Cruz, which didn't make much sense considering Graham once said, If you killed Ted Cruz on the floor of the Senate, <laughs> and the trial was in the Senate, nobody could convict you. <laughs> but he had a reason for backing the Texas senator. What turns you on about Cruz? Uh, that he's not Trump. In 2016, Graham continued this Trump bashing, tweeting, If we nominate Trump, we will get destroyed, and we will deserve it. And a string of others like, I have never been comfortable with Donald Trump as our Republican nominee. And Donald Trump is an opportunist. He's not fit to be president of the United States. And you know how to make America great again? Tell at real Donald Trump to go to hell. I'm not going to try to get into the mind of Donald Trump because I don't think there's a whole lot of space there. I think he's a kook. I think he's crazy. I think he's unfit for office. But since the election, Graham has done a 180 on the man behind Kanye's favorite hat. You know what concerns me about the American press is this endless, endless attempt to label the guy as some kind of kook, uh, not fit to be president. A connection could be made to Graham's sudden support for the president and the idea that he may have just found out about fun Trump properties. Really enjoyed a round of gold with at real Donald Trump today. President Trump shot a 73 in windy and wet conditions. How bad did he beat me? I did better in the presidential race than today in the golf course. Great fun. Great host. And Trump International Golf Club is a spectacular golf course. Great day of fun playing with at POTUS at real Donald Trump. Graham has become a stunned supporter 
supporter of President Trump. And all that used to be bipartisan about the senator from South Carolina seems to have gone out of the window. What you want to do is destroy this guy's life, hold this seat open, and hope you win in 2020. You've said that, not me. You've got nothing to apologize for. Graham once warned his Republican friends in 2015 about Donald Trump. The way he attacks women is going to be a death blow to the future of our party. But now, it seems like Graham's idea for the future of the party consists of affirming and playing golf with those very people.